like Garrett said, you know, your credit score does influence interest rates for cars, for insurance. And so it's really important to have a healthy credit score. So if someone has something that's below a 760, what do they go about doing to build that up? Sure. First, they got to understand how credit is actually calculated, what matters, what doesn't matter in your credit. And it doesn't make sense what matters and what doesn't matter. So what you have to understand, so 35% of your credit score is going to be based on utilization rates. So utilization rates are confusing for a lot of people because they might say, well, I pay off my credit card every single month. And they're not worried about how much you pay off every single month. They're worried about out of your available credit, how much are you using? So if you have a $10,000 credit limit on your card and you use $4,000 every single month, but you pay it off, if the credit card company checks in and they see the $4,000 balance, they're going to say you're using 40% of your credit. And there's two numbers to keep in mind. 30%, if you're using more than 30%, it's going to hurt you. If you get it down to about 10%, it's going to help you. Mm -hmm. So kind of in that range between 10 and 30, doesn't hurt, doesn't really help, but you're not going to get, a, it's not going to penalize you. Since it's worth 35% of your credit score, that's about 300 of the 850 points. So that's the first place to look is where are your utilization rates at currently and how, what can you do to improve those? So a couple ways to improve those. You can call the credit card company and say, I'd like you to give me a higher credit limit without pulling my credit score. Yeah, um, just make sure you're not going to spend all that money. Exactly. Don't spend it though. Right. Yeah. You have to just get the limit. Be to disciplined enough not to go that far. Yeah. This exactly. shows for big boys and girls, exactly. <laughs> not, not for, you know, exactly. cool. That's free money. I know. Yeah. Don't turn a $10,000 card into a $15,000 card and turn a $4,000 spending habit into a $9,000 spending habit. Right. Yeah. So yeah, definitely you can do that. The other thing is, you know, coming up into a loan, if, if they won't extend your credit, you can try paying off the card faster each month or earlier. So maybe you're making two payments a month instead of one or four payments mm -hmm. a month instead of one. It'll never let your balance get very high. And now your score can boost up, which might let you refinance something else to fix that, that money crunch and get that credit limit extended. 30% um, of your credit score then will be based on your payment history. So have you missed any payments? And a couple guidelines to keep in mind. These are just basic guidelines. But if you have a 30-day late, it's going to hurt your credit score for about nine months. So That's just a long period of time for is. one missed payment People or one late payment over that time. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So if you it's a long if gestation you, period, <laughs> and then if you're, if you're 60 days late, that can hurt your credit score for two to three years. How many days late? 60. Okay. If you're 90 days late, that can actually affect your credit score negatively for five to seven years. Wow. Cause they show that if you're 90 days late, your chance of a default complete default is over 95%. So they look at that as kind of the worst level. If you're 90 days mm -hmm. late, it's it's pretty bad. So you if you're going to be late on a, on a payment, call the creditor before you're late. Let them know the situation. Try and work out something that you can do to kind of stop that. That's 30% of your credit is whether or not you've ever paid late. Mm -hmm. If you've paid late and it's you honestly paid late, it's going to take some time to get that cleaned up, right? Um, and then you've got a few other categories. There's credit blend. So do you have multiple types of credit? So like a revolving line, an installment loan, mm -hmm. that kind of thing um, will influence your credit score at about 15%, uh, I believe, for that one. You have 10% of your credit score is going to be based on inquiries. So how many times does a creditor pull your credit to see if they can give you more credit or a new loan, mm -hmm. right? So just keep those to a minimum. Don't let anyone pull your credit. You'll walk into different stores, different car dealerships. They'll pull your credit so fast. It's crazy. So Especially when you were me in my 20s. And yeah. I was in my Kurt Cobain phase. Long hair still. I would have liked to have known you then. Hoop earrings. <laughs> Bleach blonde hair. It was a great phase. It was amazing. Uh, yeah, you knew each <laughs> like, other this then. This guy can't afford a car. we got to find some pictures <laughs> from back then. i got to see this. There's probably still floating around, I'm sure. And uh, so, you know, keep those to a minimum, right? Only let someone pull your credit if you're really going to seriously get that loan. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, tell them you can't pull my credit. So if you if someone calls their credit card company and says, I have a $10,000 balance, would you consider increasing it to $15,000? Do they check your credit again at that point since you already have a standing Sometimes. relationship with them? They can. So you need to let them know up front, I don't want you to pull my credit. Okay. And the first person you call is a telemarketer, most likely kind of entry level. They're not going to be able to make that decision. So you usually need to ask for somebody in a different department. Mm -hmm politely escalate the call. I always say escalate the call, but then that sounds like you're getting angry and yelling. Don't, don't do that. You, you know, when you yell, does it sound like yelling or is it still the same soft? It's, Tim the, voice? it's the same soft Tim. When voice. I'm talking, I sound like I'm yelling. So yeah. you know, we're like exactly. the opposite. Yeah, exactly. We are the opposite that way. <laughs> so they're going to want to, you know, at politely escalate the call to a different department um, and, and ask for that limit increase without a pull of the credit. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the final thing that they're going to base your credit on is your overall length of credit history. And also there's payment history and then length of history. So 
I think this plays into another question that you said we got in about mm -hmm. credit cards, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So um, to cancel them after you pay them off. Yeah. Yeah. So this the that question comes in from Vernon and it says, should I close my credit card account after I pay it off? Um, if I'm trying to clean up my credit report. On a count of three, you everybody give your answer. One, two, three. No. No. Right. <laughs> when they're looking at your credit That's history. pretty emphatic, by the way. Good <laughs> yes. job. You knew you were answering it right, so you really <laughs> put a stamp on that. Had high level of, of confidence in that answer. A lot of conviction. <laughs> so when you have credit history, they're going to look at your total length of credit history. So when did you first get credit history? And then the second thing they're going to look at is what's the average length of your current open credit history. So when you cancel that card, it's going to shorten that average length every single time and so you don't want to close a card if you don't want to use the card anymore shred it put it in your safe or something but just leave it open for as long as it'll sometimes it's good to use every quarter yeah just charge something pay it off immediately you don't need to pay interest but exactly yeah if you want to keep your cards active that's a, the great way to do it yeah. want to master your money want to figure out the things that you could do to improve your finances click here and check out more videos like this on money matters